So how many of you are on Facebook? How many of you, raise your hand if you're like, I hate Facebook. <laughs> well, 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 we might be able to change that this morning, folks. <laughs> oh, yes. If there's one person who can make you love something you hate, it's Monique Darling. <laughs> so come up, Monique. <laughs> Good morning, Monique. Good morning. I might, you know what, I might just give you a mic in here. You have okay. to, I'm not forced you to use the mic. Right. Okay, so I met Monique, when did we meet? Eight years ago. And so eight years ago, Monique was not this person that you see in front of you. What, what do you want to describe a little bit about? Do you use your personal story while I take your mic out of your bra? Uh, yes, eight years ago, then I was a Mormon housewife, very miserable. I'd like followed all the rules of the church. I had three boys. My husband and I were the first people on both sides of our family to have a house. We had the cat and dog, and I was miserable. And like I had my voice shut off my entire life. And I'd come through a background of abuse. And I started going out to California and created my own version of Cuddle Party by accident at conventions. And someone sent me a link that said, do you know there's something like that out there? Two days later, I met Reed in Vegas and it changed my entire world. And that was the first time that I felt like there's really people like me in the world. And then Reed introduced me to the Tantra community and started like really teaching me. I, I've known about energetics since I was three years old, but that's something that people want to play in. And so it's just being able, and that's what we're going to talk a lot about today on Facebook, is I've used that to be able to tell my personal story and share the things about me that I feel are unlovable and put them out there, and people love me more. Some people hate me, some people go away, but I found that's okay. And the people that are still there are the ones that that resonates with them, and there's so many other people now that are sharing their story vulnerably and being able to share it with a wider audience. So the way that, Mon and I, again, this is Monique's self-expression. It may not be yours, but the things she's doing and the way she's doing it, not necessarily the content. Her content's awesome. You can copy and paste her strategies. We want to call them strategies. Um, and you fill them with your own awesome content. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the Monique Darling. So when Reed asked me a few months ago if I'd be willing to come up and talk to everybody at Sex Geek Summer Camp about Facebook, then I'm all, but I don't know the technical stuff. I have no idea what I'll say. And he's like, I'll interview you about that stuff. And so then uh, Seva was so great. And Seva's all, Monique, why don't you just share a few of your most vulnerable posts so then people can see what it is that you share? So then I use that as an opportunity. And yesterday I wrote, I went through and found my five most vulnerable posts that I loved and got the most comments and, and made a post about that and said, okay, readers, help me decide. I'm going to teach about this tomorrow. Ten of those people shared with their groups. Uh, tons of people wrote back. And so I picked the top three to be able to share with you guys today and have people in the audience that are going to read for me. But it will give you guys an idea of like what it is of how I'm able to get across and like what Reed would call building my audience. But it, for me, that's all icing. Like it gets me so excited when I wake up in the morning at 4.30 or 5 a.m. First thing I want to do is go and write about what was my experience yesterday? What was the awareness that I had? What are the things that scare me the most to talk about? Because if I can write it, then it frees it and it's not here in my head anymore. And then other people, it, other people resonating and sharing and, and interacting back and forth. Again, that's all icing. I'm so happy that that's a gift. But the gift for me is that people want to interact, that they want to share, and that I'm not feeling like I'm broken or unlovable. Like all those pieces get to be shown. So the number one post, I'm so excited. I'll read that one myself. But, <laughs> but this happened when I was um, leaving Oakland. I was up there for a weekend because I do. I travel around from ni in nine different communities across the United States and Canada that I've created that are just extended families. And so Oakland and, and San Francisco are one of those communities. So this, this is what I wrote while I was sitting at the airport after having this experience. What a gift this morning. As I waited in a much longer than usual security line at the Oakland airport, the man in front of me began a conversation. He began the conversation with, I'm going to die. I'm flying to a hospital to die. He waited for my response, and I just stood there holding his gaze, being with him in this moment. He got angry and began cussing the line, the people, and God, then looked at me again. I was still there, just being with him, feeling such gratitude for the opportunity of this chance encounter. After a few minutes of tough guy and rage being expelled, 
he began crying and asked me for my name again. For the rest of our way in the line, we talked about God, about compassion, about how we truly all have an expiration date, and so much more. He shared how he couldn't tell his daughter. He just kissed her on the forehead and said, I love you, and then drove away. He kept thanking me for being so kind, and I kept thanking him for giving the gift of the reminder of how precious each breath is. We both stood there for a few minutes, breathing together, appreciating the magnificence and the true gift a single breath, a single moment of connection is. Then he ran for his flight, one more time saying, when he reaches the other side, the first thing he'll say is, thank you to God for Monique. And I lost it. I'm still sitting here waiting for my flight, sobbing, waiting for my boys to wake up so I can tell them I love them. I get the unique gift of getting to be with people in workshop space almost every day. I even direct them in an exercise of a silent puja, meeting themselves on their deathbed and feeling how precious life is. And yet today, I got to experience it so directly. It was one of the most holy moments I could ever imagine. And I thank God for the gift of that man this morning. And I'm also praising the universe for the gift of the awareness that I, we, all of us have an expiration date of this life. This too shall pass. And I choose to, full, choose to fully feel and experience this moment. So, and being able to write that, like it just, it, it helped me so much to be able to share because I often feel like I have so many feelings that there's no words to describe it. But that post got 276 likes and they shared it with, you know, 27 times. Or let's see, let's scroll down. They shared, but these are all new, yeah, 23 shares. And so those are all new audience that it touched these people, so they wanted to share with their people. And then I got 75 comments of how it touched people and how it reached their lives. And so, you know, that's one example. I'm going to have Matt read another one <laughs> and Shelby. So I, these, these are the top three that everyone said. Let's, let's share those. So here you go, Matt. Your turn. <laughs> 